from Hollywood, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Last week, Phil persuaded a sponsor to sign him and Alice for a radio show. However, when he found out that Alice had also signed a burlesque contract, the sponsor was furious. He couldn't break his contract with Phil and Alice, but he insisted that as long as they were on the air for him, they would never be allowed to mention the name of his company or his product. <laughs> to think this should happen to me. Me who has led such an exemplary life. Good gravy. <laughs> I've devoted my whole existence fighting temptation and trying to better myself, only to wind up married to a burlesque queen. Ugh. <laughs> the ignominy of the whole thing. Now, Phil, you know I signed that contract by mistake. Now, will you please stop? How can I stop? I can picture it now, you up on that burlesque stage and me forced to sit in the audience and watch you. <laughs> How will I ever be able to face my dear old father? Just turn around, he'll be sitting right in back of you. <laughs> Why, Dad, did you get in on a pass? <laughs> Bill, calm down. I have no intention to I go. should have listened to Mother. She told me that you Hollywood stars lead wild lives, but I never expected this. Now, I'm warning you, Wong. Tomorrow Wong. morning, when you go out to bathe in your ill-gotten swimming pool, <laughs> you'll find me floating on my back. <laughs> Goodbye, Gloria. Oh, Bill, stop riding me. Yes, you stop picking on my sister, you big bully. Just one more remark from you and I'll... I'll, you what? I'll stand on this chair and punch you right in the nose. <laughs> you do, and I'll scuff your crocheted booties. <laughs> Look, William, I think you ought to have a talk with your wayward sister. Because of her, I'm not allowed to mention my sponsor's name. Don't blame Alice. It's your fault. It's always your fault. You just can't seem to get along with the sponsors. I think there's something wrong with you. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> Have you ever thought of having your head examined? <laughs> I think you're suffering from a neurosis which is causing a violent psychopathic disturbance resulting in a pressure on your cranial area. Huh? <laughs> In short, you ain't hitting on all your cylinders, Clyde. <laughs> Philip, now, why don't you go to a good psychiatrist and let him study your little mind, hmm? <laughs> well, Willie, Phil doesn't need a psychiatrist. Last month, he had a complete checkup from head to toe, and the doctor couldn't find anything wrong with him. His toes are perfect, all nine of them. <laughs> I'll thank you not to make fun of my infirmity. <laughs> Stop trying to change the subject. It's very embarrassing to have a contract with a big company like RCA and not be allowed to mention it on the air. Shh. The contract says we're not allowed to mention it to each other either. No. <laughs> well, why worry about it, Philip, as long as they send you a check every week? And that's another thing. They don't pay us by check. They don't want the bank to know about it either. <laughs> well, how do they pay you? In cash. On Friday night, the sponsor meets me and pays me off in a dark alley. <laughs> the whole ritual we go through. Every week, I have to meet him in a different alley. A guard comes in first to make sure there's nobody around, then the sponsor comes in in disguise, pays me off. I walk out the alley, there's a gunshot, and I go home. <laughs> What's the gunshot for? The sponsor kills the guard to make sure he don't tell nobody. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, you're just exaggerating. Well, maybe I am, but it might just as well happen that way with all the secrecy we go through. You can't tell where you're Daddy, coming. Daddy, Daddy, we want to ask you a favor. We found something outside, and we want to know if we can keep it. Well, that depends. What'd you find? A Mexican chihuahua. Can we have it? No, you can't. Why not? That Mexican food is too spicy for your little <laughs> son. A chihuahua is a dog. Phyllis, Phyllis, don't correct your daddy. I'm older than you, and I know what I'm talking about. A chihuahua is something to eat. Now, the dog you're thinking of is called the enchilada. <laughs> Otherwise known as the Mexican hair lip. <laughs> and he thinks he doesn't need a psychiatrist. <laughs> Well, whatever you call it, Daddy, we'd like to show it to you. All right, call him in. Senor Lopez, venga aquí. Andale, muchacho. Hey, get a load of Dolores Del Rio. <laughs> hey, Alice, our kid's a linguist. <laughs> Listen to the way she rattles off that hieroglyphics. <laughs> she talks like a native hieroglyph. <laughs> well, well, she's speaking Spanish. <laughs> well, Daddy, here it is. Here what is? Oh, oh, oh Phil. <laughs> this is a dog. <laughs> Get that cocktail sausage out of here. Oh, honey, why can't the children keep him? Well, because I've never seen such a nude animal in my life. <laughs> Gee whiz He looks positively indecent He hasn't got a hair on him He looks like Jackson Getting ready for bed Daddy, can't we please keep him? No, honey If you want a dog Go out and get one With some hair on him Get a dog that looks like a dog Now take that thing out of here <laughs> Papa don't like for you to be in the house I think Well, now I have to run along And Philip, I wouldn't worry about not being able to do a commercial But William, I've got to worry about not being able to do a commercial If we don't do a commercial on the program We'll have three minutes left over Hey, Phil, I have a suggestion if we had three minutes, I could sing two songs. Now, wait a minute. Uh, just why should I let you sing two songs instead of me? Because you're sweet, you're generous, you're a gentleman, and you'll get cut off without a penny if you don't. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed by the logic of your argument. <laughs> Sing, Mrs. Gottgelt. <laughs> I may be wrong, but I think you're wonderful. I may be wrong, but I think you're swell. I like your style, say, I think it's marvelous. I'm always wrong, so how can I tell? All of my things are unsightly, all of my rings are a crime. If during you I pick rightly, it's the very first time. You came along, say, I think you're wonderful, I think you're grand, but I may be wrong. Well. I like your style, say, I think it's marvelous, but I can't see so, how can I tell? Deuces to us are all aces, life is to me just a bore, faces are all open spaces, you might be Gary Moore. I think you're wonderful I think you're 
Alice, that was wonderful. That was magnificent. That was superb. Will you lend me two hundred dollars? <laughs> what kind of an entrance was that, Remley? What do you need money for now? To manufacture and exploit my latest invention. Invention? What invention? I have discovered the greatest boon to mankind since the plunging neckline. <laughs> oh, Frankie, please. Quiet, honey. Quiet. This I gotta hear. What do you got going for you, Orville? <laughs> Curly, I got a formula for a product that there'll be a tremendous demand for. Now listen. What do the men in the United States want more than anything else? You found a way to manufacture women? <laughs> no, but you're close. <laughs> men want women with beautiful complexions. And this morning at breakfast, I discovered a face cream that'll give every woman a peaches and cream complexion. Gee, that sounds wonderful. What's it made of? Peaches and cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds great. How did you discover that? Well, it was accidental. I dozed off at the breakfast table and my face fell on the puffed rice. <laughs> Then when I rubbed off that mixture of cream and peach juice, it left my skin like a baby's. Just feel it, Alice. All right, I'll feel it. Hmm. Hey, it does feel smooth, but it's, it's kind of lumpy. Lumpy? Yeah. <laughs> How do you like that? I forgot to wipe off the puffed rice. <laughs> All right, Remley, you may go now. Back to your laboratory, Professor. <laughs> Look, we don't like this one, but I think if you'll apply yourself, you can come up with a good crackpot idea. Well, work on it if you think there's a market for crackpots. Ramley, go home. <laughs> and be careful on the way. I don't want any squirrels dragging you into the underbrush. Wait a minute. Frankie might have something in that face cream. Yeah, yeah. I can just see the ads now. She's lovely. She's engaged. She dunks her face in puffed rice. <laughs> Well, I don't mean puffed rice, but did you know that oatmeal is good for the complexion and that milk is good for the complexion? And, well, if you can get a good face cream out of it, you won't have any trouble at all selling it to women. Hey, Alice, if you think so, you ought to know. Hey, Remley, maybe you have got something. Yeah, but there's only one trouble. It takes a lot of money to promote something like this. You've got to advertise in the magazines, newspapers, radio. That's no problem. I can get you all the radio advertising you want. Where? For nothing. On your show. <laughs> We've got a sponsor who won't let you mention his product, so we'll mention our product. That's it. I've been worrying over what kind of a commercial I should do, and now we got it. Our own product. Yeah, we'll make a fortune. Come on, let's get started selling, Curly. You take one side of this street, I'll take the other. Okay, I'll get my sample case, and we'll get going right wait now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What sample case? You haven't invented the face cream yet. <laughs> That's such a minute technicality. <laughs> Certainly, we'll knock this thing off in five minutes. Come on, Remley, let's go in the kitchen and put Max Factor out of business. <laughs> This'll be the greatest invention since Whitney squeezed gin out of cotton. <laughs> well, good luck to you, fellas. I know you'll succeed. Because with your technical ability and fertile brains, you can't miss. Thank you, gal. <laughs> Honey, you want to come in the kitchen and watch us make it? No, thanks. I'll wait right here. It might blow up. <laughs> Well, we got the stuff boiling, Curly. How do you think it'll turn out? It's gonna turn out great. Oh, man. Did you ever hear face cream that sounded better? <laughs> hey, what do you got in it so far, Frankie? Oatmeal, milk, and a dash of ketchup. <laughs> What's the ketchup for? Seasoning. 
<laughs> a dame puts this on her face in the morning And when her husband kisses her goodbye She not only looks good, she tastes good <laughs> Figures What else do you think we ought to put in? Well, Alice uses a honey and almond cream Honey and almond? Yeah, that sounds okay You got any honey? No, but we got some maple syrup <laughs> That ought to work, it's just as sweet as honey Put it in <laughs> Now, you got some almonds? No how about some walnuts? Uh-uh, all we got is some of these What are they? Salted cashews <laughs> Put them in <laughs> Okay, this ought to do it Now I'll just stir it for a little while That looks great, Curly Keep stirring it I am <laughs> I don't hear the spoon scraping But I tell you, I'm really... Frankie What? The spoon dissolved <laughs> Oh well, little sterling silver will give it a touch of class <laughs> Oh, wait a minute No, I made a mistake The, the spoon fell to the bottom Oh, well. well I guess it's done now Turn off the gas Curly, I can't wait to try this stuff Neither can I <laughs> Well, hold still and I'll throw some on your face Keep away from me You ain't putting none of that molten lava on my kid <laughs> It can't hurt you Well, if it can't hurt you, put some on I can't I got very sensitive skin Then put it on your tongue <laughs> <laughs> On my tongue? Yeah, it might be a pleasant change After that clove you keep glued there <laughs> This might even feel soothing Oh, all right, I'll try it There's just food stuff in there, it can't hurt me I'll put a little around my lips mm -hmm. How is it, Remley? Delicious <laughs> Delicious? Yeah, this is the best face cream I ever tasted <laughs> Here, try some of it, Curly Let me see Mmm <laughs> hey, mm, this is wonderful I wouldn't mind having this for breakfast every morning This is better than any cereal I ever had And Curly, we have given it to the world Given what? The only face cream you can eat for breakfast <laughs> Oh, Remley, don't be stupid you... Hey, wait a minute Sure, this is even better than the face cream We've got a breakfast cereal I don't know Sounds kind of sneaky to start out with face cream And end up with a breakfast <laughs> But don't you see, Remley, face cream uh, Only women use But breakfast cereal, everybody uses Why, we can package this stuff and make a fortune Yeah Oh, wait a minute This stuff can't be a success It don't make any noise Noise? What are you talking about noise? To be a success, a breakfast food has to snap, pop, crackle, squeak, grunt, or groan <laughs> Nobody's gonna buy a silent cereal Yeah, I never thought it I got it hmm? Remley, hand me that bottle Now then <laughs> I'll just add two jiggers of bourbon <laughs> What's the bourbon for? Well, can't you see? We'll have the only breakfast food that hiccups <laughs> That last is a touch of genius Now even if our customers don't like our cereal It won't make any difference They'll be too loaded to complain yeah. <laughs> You know something, Remley? As soon as we get this stuff on the market We'll be wealthy Yeah, I'll be as rich as Rockefeller Who knows, I may even get to the point Where I'll be as rich as Alice <laughs> Just settle for Rockefeller How much can you carry? <laughs> now look, Remley, let's get this... What's that? Oh, that's that ball Mexican the kids brought in Go away, mutt, will you? Get out of here, beat it Yeah, go on, get lost, we got work to do Hey, Curly, we better put a little of the breakfast food in a jar And take it down and have it patented Yeah, you're right, you know We can't afford to have this formula stolen Here, put it in this jar uh -huh. Now you hold it and I'll pour it And we'll get it, beat it, will you, pooch? Will you get away from me? Get away, mutt, let go of my leg Hey, hold it still, Curly, you... Look out, you're spilling it all over the dog oh. <laughs> Hey, let them take off <laughs> mm. 
He really got out of here fast, didn't he? <laughs> that breakfast food seems to be a little strong, huh? Yeah, well, he's just a thin-skinned dog. <laughs> Most people have tougher stomach lining. Come on, let's get this jar over to the patent office. But wait a minute now, what are we going to do with the stuff that's left over there in the pot? Leave it there. When we come back, we can start packaging it. Come on, Curly. Hey, you know something? Huh? Once we get this on the market, we're going to make a fortune. That'll show Alice that I can be a success on my own. Yeah. Boo-Boo may be the queen of burlesque, but you'll be the serial king. Yeah. But I got news for you. She ain't going to go into no burlesque when I get all this dough. I'll buy her contract back from Milligan. Then she won't have to worry. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, hey, hello there. Hey, Milligan, what are you doing here? Looking for the star of the show, Boo-Boo Fay. Where's that shimmy shaking Sheba, huh? <laughs> Now look, Milligan, my wife ain't gonna appear in your burlesque show And what's wrong with burlesque? Well, there's nothing, but Alice ain't the type She wouldn't know what to do Got that all taken care of Gyp Gypsy Rose is coming over tonight to teach her all, all the fundamental rules <laughs> <laughs> Look, Milligan, I don't care who's come Gyp's coming over? <laughs> <laughs> Old Gyp, huh? Well, it wouldn't do any harm to watch you. Maybe she'll... Nah. <laughs> hey, look, Milligan, Alice can't be no bubble dancer. She was a great singer on Broadway, and she was a star at 20th Century Fox. Chicken feet. I'll make it bigger than ever. When I get through with her, she'll be the rage of Skid Row. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it doesn't seem dignified enough for Alice. She might get bad publicity. Uh, uh, just a minute. Do I look like the kind of a guy I do anything undignified, hmm? I got the most dignified publicity campaign planned out for little boo-boo you ever heard of. Yeah? What are you gonna do? Yeah, on her opening night, I got it arranged for the cops to raid the joint. <laughs> <laughs> What's dignified about that? They'll be wearing tuxedos. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll have boo-boo's name all over the front <laughs> better call it off. She ain't gonna show up. Yeah, she better show up. For three weeks, I've been advertising Alice Faye, and if she don't show, I'm gonna sue her for the food I had to buy for those 600 guys. What 600 guys? Them bald-headed ones have been sitting in the audience for three weeks. They won't go home till Boo Boo shows up. <laughs> Send them home because she ain't gonna show up. Oh, now, look, have a heart, Harris. Them guys are driving me crazy. During the day, I have 600 scalps shining in my eyes. At night, the noise driving me mad. What noise? You ever sit in the dark and listen to 600 arteries harden? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get back to the theater now. It's time for their three o'clock adrenaline shots. Come so on now, remember our slogan. More doctors would rather see a bubble dancer than smoke a cigarette. <laughs> guy never gives up, does Ah, forget him. We gotta get this stuff down to the patent office. Hey, when this breakfast food hits the market, we're gonna really be the big... <laughs> hey, now listen. Get that dog. Pooch, I told you to beat it. Hey, Remy. Hmm? Look at the dog. What about him? He's covered with hair. <laughs> <laughs> he was bald as a cucumber before. And now look at him. Yeah, he's got hair all over his body. I wonder how he grew it so fast. What could he put on that it'd make hair grow that fast? I don't know. Unless it was the stuff we spilled on him and that... Curly. <laughs> Do you think... Remley, we did it. <laughs> We've discovered a sensational hair grower. <laughs> even better than a breakfast food. Sure. Bald-headed men will pay fortunes to have their hair restored. Yeah, come on now. Let's get this hair restorer patented before it turns into something else. <laughs> hey, to think that we discovered something everybody... Hi, hey, Alice, what's your hurry? Hello, Julius. Hey, son, we've got great news for you. Guess what? Yes, it's been drafted. <laughs> <laughs> no. Curly and me have invented something. Julius, we've discovered the greatest thing since Edison found the incanasta light. <laughs> <laughs> this invention we got, Julius, is sensational. Yeah, what do you got? A breakfast food that grows hair. <laughs> what are you doing that for? I'm trying to talk your language. <laughs> what do you mean you got? 
got a breakfast food that grows hair. You heard me, and it's going to be a big seller, too. Naturally. There's a great demand today for hairline stomachs. <laughs> You see, this breakfast food is really a face cream that you rub on your scalp and it grows hair. Fellas, can I ask you a question? What? Are you really two people or just one person with two heads? <laughs> Look, Julius, I'll make it simple for you. We got a hair restorer that actually grows hair. Now, you see that dog over there? Ten minutes ago, he was bald, and now look at all the hair on him. Holy smokes, it likes! Hey, give me a bottle of that stuff to take home. My father's been looking for something like that for years. Is your father bald? No, my mother is. <laughs> all right, cut the comedy. We got no time for that kind of... What do you want, honey? Can I see you a minute? Yeah. I just tried that face cream you left in the kitchen And it feels wonderful on my face Well, it should It's the best hairy boy <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no She put it on her face I think you've got something different, Phil He certainly has He'll have the only wife on the block With a Van Dyke <laughs> Will you listen to me? This is nothing to joke about. If she ever found out that, uh oh, here she comes. Now, look, fellas, no crack about what she's got on her oh, face. Phil. Phil, I want you to feel my face and see how smooth your face cream made it feel. Oh, uh, well, I'd rather not, dear. Well, why not? You don't want to scratch his hands. This <laughs> face is something you ought to know. Now, quiet, Julius. Don't let him talk, Phil. What were you going to say, Julius? I just wanted to tell you that Christmas ain't going to be the same for me this year. <laughs> why not? It's gonna seem strange giving you a mustache cup for a present. Giving <laughs> me a what? Oh, honey, uh, uh, he said he's gonna give you a cup full of mustaches. See, it's a new Hollywood game. Whoever looks the most like Adolf Manjou wins. What are you fellas talking about? Nothing, honey. Look, will you excuse me just one minute, Alice? Hey, Frankie. Hmm? Uh, you were standing closer to Alice than I was. Hmm. Did you notice any stubble breaking through? <laughs> No stubble, just a little fuzz. <laughs> but she may have always had that. I never had any occasion to notice. Why don't you look at her and check, Curly? Yeah, I will later. I'll take a look at five o'clock, and if there's a shadow, we're blowing town. <laughs> mumbling about. I'll tell you what they're mumbling, Miss Faye. I can't let this happen to you. Don't me. you dare say anything to Alice. Yeah, you keep out of this, kid. If Alice wants to grow a beard, that's her business. <laughs> That cream you used on your face is a quick hair restorer Hair restorer? Yeah, and in ten minutes your face is gonna You mean? Like Gabby Hayes Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Harris, come here, I want to talk to you I haven't got time now, my boat leaves in a half an hour Send me a letter I'll be in Tibet, write me in care of the High Lama Come on, Remley, let's get out Come on, Alice, when my laundry comes back Forward it to the Hotel Himalaya in the Pines Come back, you coward, come back Daddy running to? He went to Tibet. When is he coming back? I don't know why. I wanted to ask him if we could keep the dog now that we pasted some hair on him. Good night, everybody, and don't forget, give and give generously to the community chest. Thanks for listening. Good night, everybody. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips, included in today's cast were Dick Lane and Stanley Freeberg. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis and Julius was Listen played... Listen now to the tales of the Texas Rangers with Joel McRae on NBC.